KCP, we've just done the last one. Yeah. The last one. And you know, you asked the difference between public and private schools. Yeah. Now, that difference is wiped out now. Oh, All of a sudden, yes. Yeah. Now there's no KCP. Yeah. Now I want you to tell me as a parent, when how you're going to I choose, a, how will you pick a school now? Now you wanted to work with schools. You want to work with schools. Because gotcha. running a school is another thing. You know, yeah. running a school is such a headache. And, and remember our school was only a, academics. Yeah. A physical school. Yeah, I can imagine. Hey, hey. Even, you're even managing toilet paper. Yeah. You're managing drivers. Yeah, it's You're managing lot. toothpicks. You're mm-hmm. managing everything. You know, actually a school is like all businesses. That's by the way. A true. school is a hotel. <laughs> yeah. A school is a, is a <laughs> restaurant. And it's education. <laughs> it's a transport yeah. business. Yeah. And it's education. Yeah. And it's also a daycare. Yeah. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> and it's entertained. Any a school you're running, yeah, almost true. everything. Yeah. What doesn't change is our parents still want to see my child will go to University of Nairobi. Yeah. Okay, you or the good ones, eh? Strathmore. Marcel, Strathmore. Mm. Senior. And so, whatever criteria those university will use to get students into those schools is whatever criteria that we want to work with as expectations. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So now. If that is a criteria, it is still not clear how our students will go into those schools when they are being told they are meeting expectations. Because it's not a score. It's not a score. A lot of, a thousand of us are meeting expectations. So how will you cut off Wangare or so and so and and admit uh, another person. Getahi or yeah. whoever it is. So whether the teacher had a lesson plan or came into class and improved how they teach, it, it didn't matter. Didn't matter. So it means even for the longest time, we didn't care how teachers teach. Because we cared about the grades. Yeah, we cared about the grades. Mm-hmm. So if the teacher produces the grades, how they teach is, is relevant. And how to produce the grades is simple. Come up with uh, 10, 10, 10 papers. You have a uh, mark those papers. Come up with more. Uh, do JESMA. Do Targeter. Do other KCP mock trials. Get KCP for the last 10 years. Serve it to your, to your learners and let them do it, see how they score. So you see, the only way we measure exam, the only way we measure Mm. progress is exams. Yeah. But you see now, CBC wants to change that, but there is no data. Yeah. So right now, how are you funding all of these activities? (laughs) eh? (laughs) Yeah, so actually, uh, we, we've been self-funded for for quite a while, Mm -hmm. up until last year. Last year, we were able to raise some proceed amount. Mm -hmm. And that's actually really helped us. Okay. How much did you raise? Yeah, we don't talk about Oh, that. we don't talk about that. Yeah, yeah, it's undisclosed because we still have some milestones that we have. Okay. Was receive. it a grant or? No, it's, it's a commercial oh, com- money. Okay. It's commercial mm-hmm. money. Education is a tool that can change the world. Um, but often I feel that education and teachers and the individuals who are involved in bringing education or giving it back respect are not even respected sometimes. So that's why I have the guest I have today. We just want to talk through, he has a startup that's focusing on education um, and excited, very excited to have him on because I've been trying for a long time <laughs> to bring him um, yeah, um, to the studio. So yeah, welcome, William. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I guess we'll just start. Who is William? Thank you. Uh, Sorry for, for the time it's taken, uh, but now schools are closed, so yeah, yeah. we have all this time now to do this kind of thing. Uh, William is, uh, let me say, a young Kenyan, ambitious, who is trying to change the course of things, some of the challenges that uh, I come across, and there are many. And so it's a question of which are the most pressing challenges that I usually come across and identify and I feel are big enough to warrant, you know, taking time and building a business around. And so I'm an entrepreneur with a background in telecommunication. Oh, so I'm a Strathmore, Strathmore alumni and quite proud to have gone through that uh, university. I've uh, done quite a number of uh, startups in the past. And... I think this is what defines me because I've just gone from startup to startup. Uh, some didn't work as well as we would have wanted. 
uh, I mean, literally died. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> still have some ventures running. And yeah, besides that, I'm a, I'm a brother. I'm a brother. I'm a my dad actually. Oh, my dad. I'm a, also a husband. All, and uh, yeah, born in a family of five, mm-hmm. and Same. grew up in a, in just in Nairobi, and seeing all these things that we we usually have to go go through, and and education has has literally been a big discussion for a long time yeah particularly in our home my my mom is a teacher actually oh wow okay yeah. and so we make a lot of jokes around teachers and the whole teaching space and and even in if you look at our social media right now malimua math mm, so yeah. malimua <laughs> math is a is a character who like you know is is characterized for not having had good wishes for 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 you and for us and a lot of us have such experiences i think yeah where maybe a teacher didn't think that you will amount to much, much maybe yeah. they didn't think that you can do something or achieve something and so it's really a crucial space you know it fa- it shapes a future of an individual of many individuals and of a country and so after having done so many startups i find myself back into education uh, when you look at Uh, the current situation of startups in in uh, in the world actually yeah edtech is the least focused on even when you look at funding when you look at uh, even media attention and opportunities edtech gets the least okay but when you look at the impact can uh, high. 12 million learners actually in education today yeah 12 million learners i mean if you have change if you bring change into this 12 million learners that guarantees change into the next uh, 40 50 100 years yeah same as africa same as the world so it's it's somewhere where we really need to uh, uh, really invest in and put a lot of effort awesome and you you said you've um, founded and some startups have died Do you mind yeah, yeah, mentioning yeah. and I, yeah, and I also can. you you I'm more than happy for you to plug your current startup because that's why we are here having Correct. that conversation what some of tell me some of the ones in the past okay okay so in 2010 2010 Uh, 2010 I started my first company. Mm-hmm. 2010 I think I was I was in my either 17 or 18 in my last teenage years and that was a domains company. So we okay. called it Domains Africa and I just discovered oh, I the domains whole Africa. Yes, I yeah, just yeah. discovered the whole domains uh, space where I can go online and put my name like williamguru.com. Yeah, yeah. You know, wangare.com and all this kind of thing and I thought this is really mind blowing because You have an identity it's like yeah. you have a home on the internet. Yeah. And so that was my first company. I formed it with my uh two two of my other colleagues and at the time the point was just selling online uh, identity and and so we went on into 2021 uh sorry into 2011 and on but that uh, collapsed at some point where you know competition was a bit stiff. Yeah. Because when you look at the cost of domains back then it was quite high. High, it's expensive. Yeah. But the automated resellers for domain, you know, meant that domains uh, they Prices. kept uh, yeah. kept going down. So we eventually had to close that and uh, I was actually in school at the time. Uh then in 2014 2015 that's a period I was ex- as actually employed Oh. And I was working for a fintech company. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's called Mode. If oh, yeah. you heard about it at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was led by uh, Pastor Julian. Mm. So it was a really great opportunity because I learned about uh, you know the whole money money transfer lending space and yeah. and micro lending particularly in that time. Actually it was nano lending. Oh wow, well, yeah. And you know you're lending small amounts but to many people and in the end you It actually up. make money so yeah. that's where i learned about uh, particularly system architecture on uh, financial systems and and i just worked for one year then i resigned so why so this is why i resigned at the time <laughs> i was working there i was on the side building a solution okay. for legal practice management okay so that's like a law firm uh, management where you have matters you have clients you have mm. Uh, paralegals and everybody on a system where you manage the whole process. Yeah. So we have a case in court on Monday that's on the calendar. Okay, you gotcha. collaborate, yeah. 
uh, that one you called it de novo. So de novo is some legal terms to mean uh, practice anew, something like that. So I built it together with one of my colleagues for nine months. Oof, yeah. So can you imagine you're coming nine to five? Yeah. And then after five, we go home and then we develop. Uh, we develop for a couple of hours every day doing that, every day doing that. And it got to a point where I was quite confident that now we have a product we can take to market. Yeah. So I resigned on the confidence of that product. <laughs> okay. <Where>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where? It was hard. <laughs> hey. So when I left, my actually my very good friend, he's called Dixon. Yeah. He's the first one who gave me a comment that shook me. He told me, Hey, unajua lawyers vile ni wajua juu. Yeah, you cannot. Unajua vile lawyers ni wajua. <laughs> Now I have a product that will disrupt the. <laughs> yes. <laughs> unajua vile lawyers ni wajua. Yeah. So I actually I tried selling to a law firm to get cases out. Uh, the first law firm we tried uh, t- uh, demoing or rather doing a trial. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I realized some cases cannot even be documented. Okay, interesting. Zina kuanga chini ya maji. Oh. Hey, okay. <laughs> So I'm trying to to solve a problem where you you should document your things but kumbe there are things that should not, should be, not documented. be documented yeah mm-hmm. after building for nine months so we went ahead we tried to push for I remember one time I had to change my profile picture okay uh, on Twitter just to get a visit oh wow or rather a, a, an invite to to demo so I I changed my profile photo to one of these photos where I I I I was with my niece. So I was I was in a suit and then I was with my niece. Just to look <laughs> like a dad. <laughs> to look like someone. Plus I was really young. So I tweeted some lawyer there and actually gave me a visit. Oh wow. Or rather a, a, a demo a, an invitation come to come yeah. for a meeting. And we went. Hey, we botched that thing. <laughs> oh Whoa, no. it it went south because there were bugs in the system. We oh, couldn't snap. explain it. Really it was another point uh, where a learning we experience. had to again go back and fix but i can say it was it was a learning experience because we didn't know how to sell you know how to explain our solution yeah 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 so that was back in 2015 mm-hmm. uh, around the same time towards the end of 2015 we started a uh, a loyalty app okay mm-hmm. so it's called paid paid.co.k mm-hmm. uh, so the idea was Actually the initial idea was we build something that you don't need to have uh, loyalty cards. You know this kind of loyalty yeah, cards yeah, that, that you carry kind. around. So yeah. we wanted to put all that into one one solution and if you go to many businesses then you don't need to to have a loyalty to, card. To sign up, so you have yeah. a new supermarket a new loyalty card. Yeah, yeah. Like even today yeah, it's, yeah. it's very painful to have another loyalty card. You shop at uh, you know Uh, Kafo you have okay. another one for Naivas yes. Tasky it yeah. went down and many others mm. so that was the idea and on the other side to make it more affordable for businesses because if you have to invest in cards you have to invest in infrastructure for this uh, yeah. cards it's also expensive, it's expensive and yeah. the smaller businesses can't afford that yeah so uh, we built that and the, actually the lesson I had learned from Dinovo the law firm thing was to to never never start coding before you validate an idea exactly never <laughs> yeah, yeah. never sit down start coding and then and then you've done a whole nine months one year or, or whatever god knows before you actually you know validate. that a problem yeah. is real so yeah for that thing we came up with uh, a few ideas one of it was that's a, the early days for impesa api mm-hmm. at that time it was in xml mm-hmm. it was difficult but The idea was we are going to tie our solution purely to Mpesa. Okay, yeah. So if you buy anything from a shop, we'll only take the digital transactions. Okay, yeah. And it feels like we're promoting Mpesa. Mpesa. At that time it was not that popular and, yeah. and even the charges were much higher. But the idea was solid because all we needed to do was just uh, build a small engine for awarding points. Yeah. Uh, send people SMSs and when they purchase it's like they get a point and yeah. it's an sms and the code for mpesa is what's going to be tied as the loyalty code oh, for that, for that business. point so yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. it's like building on top of mpesa yeah uh, that made sense uh, we went <laughs> to copo 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 was the first uh, first uh, partner we worked with 
and they gave access they gave us access to their API and that was really nice because yeah. they had lots of merchants and we could easily integrate mm-hmm. but now the challenge was to sell our solution not as copo copo but as another product yeah. but they also have to have copo copo so even when we went to the market you had to find a customer who uses a, a copo copo teal yeah and then you integrate so that was quite quite okay we also managed to integrate some directly into safaricom but also copo copo was going through some challenges yeah. of this whole trying to struggle with uh, mpesa you know it's like mpesa still wanted to centralize api and yeah and and even some some merchants were were closing down their teals and you know it's a common thing yeah yeah, yeah. Then at the time actually cash was still at 90%. So oh, wow. So you would only be uh, attending to 10%, 10% of the clients. Yeah. But it was a good it was a good eye opener because we we now later built an online POS. Uh, What's the online POS called? It's like a it's pay.co.ke. Oh, it's still pay to pay.co.ke. Pay.co.ke. So this is where if you had it's like a cash register so you just dial in who uh, who's the customer and how much did they buy or what did they buy and when you key it in it issues the points. Oh cool. Yeah. Uh, it sounded like a very silly idea actually at the time but can you imagine it runs to date? Oh nice. To date it's it's like a successful How many outside. merchants are there on it or Today we serve over over 150 I think. Oh over wow. 150 and it's not just in also in UG we have, we have Oh that's really cool. Congrats. UG. Yeah, thank you. So that was a really stupid idea. <laughs> <What> really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But to my surprise, it's, it still runs to date. And loyalty is still driving business. It drives yeah, yeah, a lot sure. of business revenue for for our merchants and and we've had a really low churn except for the businesses that closed down. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, there are some businesses that closed yeah. down. The churn has been really low. That's so cool. <laughs> uh, of course the the growth has also been as has not been as high as we'd want it to be. But are you, it's but a are sustainable actively, business. Are you actively selling it or is it yeah. like okay. Yeah, we cool. are actively selling it. Yeah. Uh but not not too much again. It's a niche. It's like it's a kind of a niche uh, yeah. solution. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing together with my partner and uh, obviously myself I like doing a lot. So yeah. Uh, we did that it was okay in 2016 2017 it was still good so in 2018 i had this really uh, new idea of integrating delivery okay <laughs> hey where <laughs> hey where <laughs> yeah yeah it's tricky so and delivery, complex <laughs> yes the only thing that people knew about delivery digitally was send at the time yeah obviously you know how we we are as a market if you want to develop something and people knows a certain product they tell you there's no use why why do you do that i mean there's send, send it there's yeah. whatever else but for me it was we have all these merchants we are working with and a lot of them are selling physical things which need to be to delivered to be delivered yeah so the idea was how do we build that uh, fulfillment uh, mm. infrastructure on our platform and offer is a, offer it as a value add yeah, yeah. service makes sense yeah but now the problem was I built it as a separate brand so it was known uh, as asap okay. a y s u p okay asap yeah and initially what we wanted to do was just recruit riders across town yeah and once we recruit them we have a, it's like a basically ride hailing yeah, model. Yeah. so they share 20% we take 20% they take 80% they mm-hmm. deliver on time and we still needed to track yeah <laughs> uh, remember i'm a low code guy yeah from 2014 i learned my lesson so uh we we integrated a tracking device so there's a tracking device that we were able to purchase and put in in the phones or rather in the mob, in the bikes and so we tracked that bike everywhere it went so we had a portal where we were tracking all bikes we know okay. this is uh, kmet or this is whatever and we knew exactly where they are so we could promise the customer how long it how takes long to deliver yeah. and we can see it in real time so we got our first rider okay very good second rider okay it's getting it's getting it's getting a few riders then we started dealing with uh, quality issues okay in terms of what quality so we were able to deliver on demand 
at very low cost 80 okay. shillings 100 shillings even from La- can you imagine from lovington to to all the way to kongara you're doing 80 shillings oh, wow. for the delivery so we were able yeah, to offer very, very affordable. affordable deliveries yeah and the model was going well because like would would deliver bulk and yeah. put them on a route the first quality issue was when we delivered something to to a customer and then they said the rider na kam chafu sana <laughs> hey can you imagine Aww. so the rider na kam chafu and you know i think it was it was a, it was a lady because they were buying cosmetic beauty hair stuff i think mm. Yeah, they're all different, I guess. So they compared, <laughs> uh, so they complained to the to the business owner. So they don't know we are the ones delivering. Uh, Then the business owner fell down on us. Don't okay. send that rider to me again. Get me another rider. Yeah. We had only three riders. Was it was he was it a fair comment? Was it a fair review that he <laughs> Okay. I think it was not fair because yeah. when you look at the cost of d- delivery Yeah. We were not offering premium premium yeah. Wells Fargo kind of delivery yeah, so you've service. Your... And they have gotten a product for quite quite an affordable rate. Yeah, yeah. But maybe it made sense because you know they feel they they would want a well neat rider in a suit. And and it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I never in think about it. <laughs> I don't know like in a suit. So, yeah. So now we had to start switching riders. So we oh. sent a different rider the next day. But then that rider we don't own them you know we, yeah. we only borrow their capacity. Mm. Then you know these riders again they are just different. Yeah. If they get work elsewhere they go. go. Yeah. Where so on the second third day then it started working and then this rider again now they do they travel up country. Oh. Where so we have to send the first dirty rider. Now alikuwa amekosana. The drama. <laughs> so so now we realize that it's it's really a business that you need deep pockets because you need like a thousand riders mm. now for you to onboard a thousand riders you need a thousand a thousand trackers mm. because we were not paying for these trackers we were not making them pay we were giving them on credit and then they pay as we work with them okay. then they feel then they, we have confidence in what yeah, we're saying skin in the game yeah but you see you have to invest in all those trackers you have to invest in we were giving them uh, reflector jackets and we were giving them bags mm-hmm. and, and the so bikes were the their, no, the, the bikes they their own yeah, their okay. own bikes mm-hmm. but still it's a cost because we're not funded this yeah. is money that Bootstrap you're putting it. from your own pocket yeah. from savings from everywhere and trying to grow the business as it goes so that went on we 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 went we went on uh, just challenges and that kind of thing then then we discovered a new model that we can actually get investors people like you mm. give us 150,000 and then we give you an amortization return on investment okay. where you'll be making some money and when you look at the full amount it's going to be a good return on your money okay where <laughs> where that's where the devil lied to us because we got our first bike mm-hmm. now when we got our first bike now we were sure that we were giving out 20% now we're going we're giving out 80% now we'll be giving out 20% because now it's our bike yeah it's your bike yeah you are our employee yeah where you don't own me by the <laughs> oh my goodness can you imagine that bike within the first like two months ilikuwa imeingia kwa you know ilikuwa imeingia kwa police station oh god i don't know thrice whoa and you know now it's our problem Yeah. Previously, when that guy is arrested, it's... we don't even know. We don't even want to know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Now, our bike because it's our bike, the rider doesn't handle their own issues. Yeah. They don't know where to park. They don't really care. At Ngambaka kwa police station and they'll be calling you at night at you what? And godly hours, no? Huh? Hey. So, we really lost a lot of a lot of money. Oh, Paul. Mm. Getting into police station means you lose a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Uh we also lost a lot of time. Yeah. Because akishikwa alikuwa anapeleka delivery ya customer. Yeah. So customer ako sasa ako unhappy. Yeah, I was waiting. So yeah. now that became a big of a challenge and actually that is what led to us closing down. That's because that's how we couldn't operate. Mm. Now you are 
we lost more money than we gained mm. by trying to get you and know, how long did it take you to ah three months to live to me sure <laughs> like I'm done, I'm done. so I, yeah so that that went down in around 2018 and uh, mini nani 2018 <laughs> i came up with another idea still on the same uh, trackers because when we integrated trackers it's it's very unique and, and actually i think i've never come across anyone who's done that yeah So we realized where were you we getting the still, truckers from? Like Upper to Tao to. Oh, okay. We were mm-hmm. just buying here in town. Yeah. But you 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 integrate so you you get the, uh, there's a way it sends coordinates yeah. telematics data yeah. to to a server. Mm-hmm. So we designed our own server that can interpret those okay. uh, those devices and you can follow it and now you place that that information on a map so you can live you can follow, live track it. Yeah. So I thought with this technology If you come into cars we can track we can help people track cars and then with that information you can use it for a lot more yeah for like knowing how much mileage your car's gone yeah then when it does the service mileage you can prompt someone you can yeah get more business and that kind of thing so we we we, di- we set up a new business called Motelix so Motelix is just motor analytics no oh. and we had an app where now that app was supposed to now show you the health of the car okay it's more like digitizing you know that car car thing that they put on your car when you go for service yeah yeah next to the the mm-hmm. wiper controls or the yeah, yeah yeah so that one so having that alive and you know many people their cars go past service by All then, the because of that so, <laughs> yeah yeah so you you will be using your car until it stops yeah. so we're trying to say that we're creating a maintenance plan for used cars yeah because you know these cars we buy are 8 years old yeah zikio uko zikona maintenance plan yeah like they say maybe every year it has to go for a certain maintenance plan or ikifika easy mm. mileage but here these are used cars mm. unatumia mbaka isimame yeah <laughs> so now we built that uh, app and we actually got into the Bosch Bosch mobility oh congrats uh, competition here in 2019 Yeah, nice. Uh, that was good. Now we're feeling people are validating hey. our idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yes. We even registered our company in the US. What hey, are you saying? Hey, look at you, Delaware. Hey, you got Delaware. Now but do you Yeah. Should close it. So now uh, now we have validation, we have a new idea and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I really love going to ground. So I went to I went to Kirinyaga Road, I went to Uko Industrial Area, mm. Uko Kutafta Mechanics and just now to start understanding how do they think. It wasn't long before I realized this is a, is going to be a CRM. Okay, yeah. It's going to be a CRM B2B. Yeah. And that's how we'll start our business. Yeah. You know Kenya is a B2B market yes. for startups. Yeah. Ukifanya B2C, it doesn't take you long before you realize. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <tough>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we were trying to set up uh now that CRM for B2B so that now if I'm the one who has a garage yeah i can, you can see put all, all the cars, cars for yeah. my customers then i can be watching in a car coffee service let me just let prompt me this prompt guy, the right guy now. come and get us which is what they do but in paper format yeah that was making sense uh, so we were three founders to look to make a company into three mm. but now the challenge was them they were working me i was in the streets ah oh, tough where <laughs> hey. so i have information on the streets up to today mm. but they have information on the streets up to the last time we met mm. and what i tell them a lot of the time is fictional science like i make sense to them see yeah see see masters yeah. see see it is a textbook so it's not easily understood like i say this is i think we need to go so uh, that one actually also went down and i can It's tell you there. it went down on that whole issue that we have three founders the founders were not kind we are not like at two aligned, aligned. Uh, yeah. you have two people who are eight to five and one person who is out here eh. but like what happened to like that's I, just, i think that's still a valid idea yeah Why it's th- still a valid idea Like where is the code like have you tried to like By the way it's somewhere <laughs> it's somewhere remember we had 
picked I had lifted the the technology from the other one into this one but as a hiyo ika ikakuwa ni ngumu ai pole so 2019 2020 ah ikakufa pole tukianza 2020 so now 2020 now ndio sasa tumefika now 2020 covid things were really bad Tough, for yeah. most people yeah including our clients so remember i have the other uh, business that does loyalty yeah, it loyalty. still runs ata hapo iko it's that one is it's it's going it's good. a hiyo ineza last a nuclear war you <laughs> yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. so 2020 things are so bad but not just bad they are also slow yeah sasa tumeambiwa tukae nyumbani so i team up with my friend uh, my friend moses now So he tells me uh, I have this idea nataka to build an app for teachers to teach remotely. Oh yeah. Remember from the first idea I don't build things before I validate the solution. Yes. Yeah yeah yeah. Nikamwambia me see oni. By the time you are doing that this covid itataka imeenda. If we are yeah. taking advantage of covid we have to do a different approach. So nikamwambia Okay, why don't you just use Zoom? I mean, so you just use Zoom it's there. And that's what most put teachers did. this side and put <laughs> learners this side. Yeah. Let them teach. You know where you're now coming in. Apart from when it's kids. I remember when my daughter at the time she was three. Mm-hmm. A Zoom class with like yeah. 23 year olds. Can you imagine? Hey. 20 of them. Yeah, so it's like in what one class. is this? <laughs> <laughs> It was, I don't know. That was just like at that point I was like whether it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it was chaos. It was chaos. chaos. Is what yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the teacher is low tech lab. Yeah, yeah. It was so, such a struggle. Commute, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> And it felt like parents had to you had to do a lot as a parent like you're trying to yeah, work from yeah, home yeah, you have you children have, to... have to follow that class. Yeah, it was a lot. And, uh-huh. Yeah. So I told him, hey, we fanya Zoom. <laughs> Ujipange na hiyo kutoka hapo. So he told me, hey, how do I do this?" I told him, "Okay, we fanya hivi. Uh, if you think you need my help, I'll keep you accountable." Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I I'll partner. keep you accountable. You yeah. now start uh, me nitakuwa hapa I'll be asking you questions and whatever we said, I'll come back to check. Yeah. Then he said apana it's more in pers- like you should be part of this. Oh okay. Hey. Now I didn't have a okay we had started we tried to start a business for selling here time. Mhm. Yeah it yeah it too. <laughs> yeah Africa stocking. Yeah. Virtual air time and my calculations were telling me that if you sell air time for a million bob uh, you get I think 10%. I think our account gets 10% if mm. I'm not wrong. Mhm. Uh, not 10%. Uh less than 10% i think okay sure. so i knew if i do a lot business, of air time yeah. yeah if i do a lot of air time you can get there yeah 100 actually 10% 100 g's mm. so we started promoting air time yeah but it's not a very busy business by the way because you just get online you promote it and people buy air time and you know yeah. it's self dispensing yeah you send money to a till number and then automatically you get the money yeah but i had a lot of other time so i was i was like okay Let's do this. Uh, I'll be part of it. Oh cool. Now, when I start looking at something, when I when I start thinking about an idea, I don't stop. Yeah, I know. That's obsessive I don't stop. like hey, now it gets crazy. <laughs> yeah. So within two days we had we had a we had a we had a name. So we called it the other school. Mm-hmm. We had a name. We knew everything how it's going to work at time table and we even considered who we are going to target. Oh nice. So we knew we were not going to target those three year olds. Yeah. So we said to not target what when you want to do KCP. KCP yeah yeah. And class 7. Yeah, makes sense. And 6 yeah. max. Yeah. Those are the ones we feel have the need to be learning. So you're to targeting honest, students at this stage. Parents of those students. Parents of those yeah, students. Parents mm-hmm. of those students. And then we're going to hire teachers. Oh nice. So we came up with a form for teachers to apply. That's so cool. Br- br- we we sent it everywhere and teachers started applying for yeah. Nekas CVs. I still have those CVs. Then now I was wondering do, how am I going to run a school when I don't know how to run a school. <laughs> so even advertise for a head teacher. So we have advertised for a head teacher and yeah, teachers guess, 
Mm. And now we're also marketing to get learners. Yeah. Where? We built a timetable. This is how the classes are going to go. They're all virtual. We'll have links. And this is how they're going to be uh, disseminated and all that kind of thing. So let me ask you, at that point, was 844 was still around? Yeah, yeah, 844, yeah. yeah. Okay. We still had like four classes. Okay. KCPE. Yeah. So uh, that was around April 2020. Mm. I remember. The last week of April 2020 is where we formed everything. Then, uh, then we said, how do parents come in? No, we need an open day. Mm. So we set an open day for the 1st of May. A virtual that was, one? Yes, a virtual one. Okay. Everything is virtual. Yeah, yeah, this time, yeah. So we have a virtual school and we have a, an open day. We have hyped online everything. Mm. There is a uh, kuna physical. We have hyped it and this is how people are going to go. So the first of the month was going to be on a, on a Friday, I think, if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. So we had an open day. We had like a like hundred parents coming. Oh, wow. Nice. That was powerful. Yeah, that's a lot. Then our teachers were there to add confidence and people asking, is this a real school? Are you accredited? Then the teachers are, oh, neka to apple. And you know, we had a head teacher. We'd had a few <laughs> staff meetings in one week. <laughs> to me hire, to me recruit, to make a kill them too. Then some teachers didn't even show up. Yeah. Because you know it's virtual. Yeah. If I just disappear, you will never find you know, me. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Then, after the open day, we told them we'll have our first model class on the next day. That was on a Saturday. Oh, so okay. if parents want to participate in our first class, it's they, free. They you can, can come mm -hmm. before you decide to pay. So they came. How many came for the first class? I think seven. Okay. Oh, that's not too bad. Seven marks. Mm. And it was a class eight mathematics class. Mm. Yeah, then we started. On Monday, we started classes. Uh, we were ahead of all schools. So a lot of students were there. Teachers were there. Hey, we told parents you can be there with your the students if you want to. Yeah. Oh, wow. And Ikashika fire. Yeah. But now, as time went, students started going back to their schools. Because now their, stool, their schools started catching up with with. Technology. Now what is Zoom? Zoom. Do yeah. you know Zoom? How can we do it? So we started losing students. We started losing teachers. And you know when you lose a student, if they are not paid, akienda <laughs> neogo. That's it. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's it. Na pesa. Yeah. So we, we still Jeez. had such issues. Collection of money was a challenge. So you weren't um, getting them to pay before they... You know they have to confirm it works. Oh, okay, gotcha. Then you. when they confirm it works, now they have to pay a commitment okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. to come. But the remaining money, they won't pay. And then we're charging them per month. Uh -huh. So they could have paid the first month, like in the first, second month, they have not paid. Okay, yeah. So we did May, June, July. But now by the time we're doing July, hey, to look to me, because we were paying teachers premium. Oh. Top, you know, we wanted to have the best, best teachers, teachers so that we know that parents know that this is quality. Yeah. And they're referring other people and they're, you know, and we had students who... The teachers, the parents told us live. My school has has this tuition platform, but I want them to be here. Okay. Because Anna feel there is quality. Yeah. But now you see we're not breaking even. Yeah. And we're not making money elsewhere. Yeah. So he to narudisha tu apa tu. Hey. By the time we were we had spent like half a million by the time the first three, four months were over. Hey, to Kambiana, here. We're being Mother Teresa. Here we are. <laughs> we are helping the world, but we will die here. It, it doesn't make sense. So we we eventually had to bring it to an end. Oh. But now we learned a lot. Hey, a lot, a lot. Or rather, at least I learned a lot. Because I learned what it takes to have a good quality uh, offering in a class. Yeah. A teacher must prepare very well. They have to. They must be able to deliver very well. You know, using audiovisual and that kind of thing. And they must assess. Yeah. So those three things. You you come into class, you do very good preparation. Uh, you teach quite well. And you assess. And you engage and then you assess. Mm. So on the basis of those three, three, three things, uh, we now decided to pivot into a platform that can enable a teacher to do the three oh, awesome. in a normal classroom. And that's now mm. how we pivoted to... To Kurasa. Kurasa. That's how now Kurasa was born. Got you. So what Kurasa a beautiful journey, pages. man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's pages. So we wanted to ensure that all the pages that are in the lives of a learner, they're able to keep up with all of them. Yeah. And there's a lot of paperwork, all this, making them 
make sense and and retain that information for future decision making. Okay. So are you still targeting yeah. um the teachers, the schools, the parents who are you targeting with Kurasa? Yes. So now Kurasa we we, we now realize that now we can't have a school yeah. because towards September uh, yeah, COVID school, Alicia, you have the uh, school, school came back yeah, <laughs> yeah school yeah. came back and now we want a school. Yeah. But now we didn't want to run a school. Mhm. Now we wanted to work with schools. We want to work with schools because gotcha. running a school is another thing. You know, yeah. running a school is such a headache. And, and remember, our school was only academics. Yeah, a physical school. Yeah, I can imagine. Hey, hey. even you are even managing toilet paper. Yeah, you are managing drivers. Yeah, it's you are managing lot. toothpicks. You are managing everything. You know, actually, a school is like all businesses. That's by the way. A school true. is a hotel. Yeah. A school is a is a restaurant and it's education. <laughs> it's a transport business. Yeah. And it's education yeah. and it's also a daycare. Yeah. And it's <laughs> and it's entertain. And a school you are running it's, yeah, almost yeah, everything. True. Yeah. So we had to know where our focus is. Mm. What are we good at and what are we bringing into this whole value or value Interesting. chain? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we stuck now to education, education. classroom, teachers. So we focus on so today Kurasa focuses on on the teacher to support the teacher to do their work uh, make it more meaningful to to improve their practice so to make them to make it easier for them to do the right thing because yeah. as it is right now uh, a teacher has a number of professional documents to do yeah let me let me let me state them number 1 a teacher has schemes of work mm -hmm. so right now as we speak hundreds of teachers or thousands of teachers have to go back to their schools right now in November to do schemes of work. What is schemes of work? Yeah, schemes of work <laughs> is they have to take on the curriculum and look at how they're going to teach oh, in gotcha. 2024. Four. Yeah. So they have to go and prepare on uh, when we come back with grade three, for instance, I'm going to start with uh, numbers in mathematics. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to teach addition in Week one. Mm. In week two, I'm going to teach subtraction. subtraction. In week three, I'm going to be teaching place okay. value. Yeah, yeah. Th like that, like that. So those are schemes of work. And okay. they have to explain this one, how, how many lessons will be in that week. So they have to go back to their schools because these schemes are physical. Oh, really? Yes, they are physical papers. Why can't you do it digitally? <laughs> so now that's where we come in. Okay, because now yeah. in Kurasa, yeah. can you imagine the teachers who have to travel to Homer Bay? Oh, wow. Because that's where they come from. See, yeah. schools are out. Yeah. You go back to Homabe or you go back to Kangundo or wherever you come from. Yeah. So it means with a Kurasa account, a teacher is just logging in to, cre to create their schemes from wherever they from are. From wherever they are. And then the head teacher from also wherever he or she is, whether he went to Taita or wherever, he can check and see, okay, I see nine of my 20 teachers have already done schemes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's schemes of work. Mm-hmm. Then there is a, now they come to teach, they have lesson plans. Mm -hmm. So even after you do schemes of work, before you go to that class, you have to now prepare a lesson, lesson plan. Yeah. Now lesson plan borrows from the scheme, but now you include details like how you're going to teach, like what's the procedure for teaching, okay, like gotcha. methodology. Yeah. You also include, uh, uh, it takes things like resources and mm. there are other things that CBC has introduced like uh, inquiry questions because it's supposed to be inquiry-based learning. Yeah, yeah. So it's another document, which you must prepare for every lesson. Oh, wow. Then after you teach, there is assessment. Assessment. Now you have to do rubric assessment or all the types of assessments that there are. There are like nine here oh, in wow. Kenya. Mm. And you have to record. Yeah. So all that has to be in paper. And then there's records of work, which they have to show now. Okay, you've done assessments, you've done that. Where are your records of work? Like, umefika wapi. Okay, We yeah. used to call it syllabus coverage. Umefika yeah. wapi. yeah. Then there are others now, things like registers and there are other documents also depend on the, depending on the school. You could find that they have a deep discipline record book or uh, like a supervisory, like how, how they report now. Because there's also a HR aspect to teaching. Yeah. There's a supervisor who manages how they, how they do. So all these things, they have to be done on paper. Okay. Now, you know what happens? This makes the learners suffer because... If it takes them one hour to do a lesson plan, they not do a good one. Yeah. They just do it for the sake of doing quick, it. Quick, 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 so yeah. they are not thinking about that class as 
this lesson plan representing a good class, a good lesson that I'm going to teach. Okay. And then just a question. Do lessons, do they change? Like say I teach like standard sevens mm -hmm. and I have the curriculum. Say, can, can I easily use that same, everything I've created, all those artifacts for like the next year? Or do I have to keep changing? You have to keep doing it. I have yeah. to keep doing yeah. it. Yeah, it includes the day of the lesson oh, and the time. Okay. And how many learners attended. So okay. next year it's going to be different. different. So you can't use the same. Okay, but there's yeah. some aspects that can be used. Everything is the same. Okay, yeah, yeah. Everything is it's the same topic okay. unless the curriculum has been revised. Has been revised. Okay, it's gotcha. the same. Okay, but because it's it's a new class, it's a new year. You have to copy this one physically. Ah, uh, I and see. Copy what you, into yeah. the next. So this is document. where you guys come in. That's where yeah. we come in because Perfect. you can come and pick the template that you used Very last smart. year. Yeah. And lift it into the next year. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So you're building a lot of context for. Future teaching, future, future teacher. learning. And yeah. it's so good to document it as well. Mm. And imagine mm. if it's all documented, like on paper, yeah. like you, yeah, have no idea. And, and you see, it also has an administrative uh, benefit because now you can see how people teaching. Yeah. And how, how is that changing based on outcomes? And how are people teaching in this way compared to this other way? What outcomes does Out, it yeah. represent? Does it change yeah. in terms of outcome? Very interesting. Yes. Cool. Um, wow, what a journey. I've learned a lot. Yeah, thank what, you. What challenges have you faced? And I want to ask that and also how you get schools on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the challenges that we have faced, number one and the biggest challenge yeah. is attitude or technophobia. Okay. So we are working in a space that is... Gotcha. Non-tech. Yeah. A space that... Uh, Laggards. Anything yeah. beyond WhatsApp... Too much. Is, ma is a master's degree in IT. Mm. Mm. Is go is, you know, it's it's too much. Hey, you are telling us to to log in to... to hey, 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 yeah, I app. can imagine. <laughs> uh, to an app. <laughs> and is it an app or it works on like desk like... So it's it's a web based app. It's web based. So okay. it works on on, yeah. on their phones, on their smartphones. Mm. Uh, some teachers are having laptops now. Yeah, I was going to ask: Are yeah. they usually given laptops? To... No, 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 no. They're not given. But government government schools have laptops. Okay. Government schools have already uh, from the DLP program. Mm. They were given uh, a lot of these devices. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, challenging with. Yeah. So that's number one. Yeah. The the attitude thing is a big thing. And you know that means that it's not urgent. Yeah. It's never urgent. Because that's the way it has always worked. So they don't see how it can work better sooner. What's the need? You know, what's what's the urgency? But they've explained. No, we've taught me. ten years. <laughs> There's a lot of value in doing this. <laughs> yes. We had been sold. Yeah. And you see, yeah. the the person who like for us the teacher is the person who sees the value. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. So for the teacher, it can be very urgent. Yeah. But they're not the decision maker. They're not the decision maker. I yes. got you. It's the principal. So you have to the... talk to the owner of the school. Yeah. In some cases you have they have the schools have boards, they're owned by faith based organizations. Yeah. Wow. Or or a group of people yeah. or families. Actually, the most most schools in Kenya are owned by families. Yes. Hey. <laughs> hey. hey. And we know African families Whoa. already. <laughs> and you know the family? It's the dad who has a checkbook. Yeah. And we are selling something. Yeah. So you are selling to the son or the daughter who buys. Mm. Like in the checkbook, you Not dad. Dad. Yeah. Now, Dad, you think they 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 they, they have the checkbook so that they understand what they are buying? Yeah, it's not like at they just at they are the best custodian of the at the end you want to who keep it safe. No, they have the checkbook so that they they take time to understand. Of course, in their own perception, these young people they can be fooled easily. Yeah, they don't know the pain of money. They don't know yeah, yeah. how long it took. <laughs> so they have to us to to, to, to have this business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so now you have to. You have to convince the first line. Sometimes it's a head teacher. You have to then get a meeting with the next line. Whoa. Maybe it's the son or the daughter or whoever it is. Then they have to now go to the bigger group. So, so you can imagine it's a whole, just... it's a slow <laughs> sales cycle. My goodness. It's yeah. very slow. But but again, we've enjoyed a very low churn because of, for all the I schools can imagine. that have Once come you in, have, yeah. they cannot even imagine without it going back. Yes. Because okay. now, 
Can you imagine like now, schools have come to another end of year. We have a school that has been with us for at least now for three years, for the mm. three years we've been here. Uh, so one, one academic year was like six, eight months. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So for those schools, they have records for three years. Which is perfect. Yes. Yeah. Now, can you imagine, and this is like 90, I don't know, 7% oh, well. of schools in Kenya, they use a book. They use a book to record all that. Oh, well. If today you had a survey and said, uh, you go to all the schools and tell them to bring up data for, for the last three years. Out of yeah. those 97%, not even, I don't think even 20% oh, are, can give you that information. Yeah. Now, that is for teacher data. Now, for learner data, those books went home. Now, if you say those books to come back to school, hey, anything hey, like my kids. <laughs> will not, where are they? I don't even Zina know. Fire but now you see, <laughs> yeah. in, in, our, in our scenario where, like in Kurasa schools, Kurasa students, Kurasa parents, even if they were given PDF documents on their emails, it's the, or, uh, or they were printed. Yeah. Even if they lo they can still log in and download, download again. it. So yeah. It's it's very powerful. And by the way, in our education system, uh, right now we are in grade eight in the next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe they don't understand CBC. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me let me let me explain uh -huh. why it's important. Uh -huh. So right now we're in grade eight. Okay. Grade eight is standard eight. Standard date. Let's okay. call it standard date. Mm -hmm. So now this is what is known as junior secondary school, JSS. Junior secondary school. You could have heard about it. Mm -hmm. So now students move to JSS at grade six, standard six. Okay. For for context. Eh? Okay. So now there's three years of standard six, standard seven, standard, standard eight. eight. Mm -hmm. Grade six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Then from there, they will go to senior secondary school. Which is high school. Yeah. Which is like high school. Yeah. For another three years. Only three? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that will be the last uh, three years for basic education. Mm -hmm. Now, CBC has prescribed that in the last three years of, uh, of that cycle, they should have some pathways, what they're calling pathways. Okay, yeah. Now, pathways means there are students who will go into STEM, mm -hmm. into Madhafu, into yeah. science. Science, technology, kind of yeah. Then there are people who will go into sports, sports and arts and that kind of thing. Okay. And I like uh, that. So there's actually a pathway for people who want correct. to go. That's wonderful. It's nice, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's for yes, four it whatever. <laughs> <So> that, <laughs> no, it's like choosing subjects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now a bit more more career. Yeah. Career, like, sounds yeah. like career thing. Yeah. And I think the last one is humanities. Okay. If it was a languages, literature, if it was a So has that changed? Because I remember when I was in high school, you'd have to do like at least three sciences, so let's say I choose a uh -huh. arts pathway. Does yes. that mean I don't need to do like a science because I've decided I want to be an artist or? Uh, great question. You know, right now we are going through education reforms. Okay. Right now. Yeah. And a lot of those uh, learning areas are going to be condensed in mm. particular in JSS. Yeah. So things like integrated science and that kind of okay. thing. Uh, the idea is what you're saying, that yeah. if you're going through art, then you have less of sciences or less of mathematics. Yeah. And the reverse is true. Yeah. Uh, but this is where I was coming with that point, actually. Okay. <laughs> with that point is for you to transition learners into this or this or that. Mamboni? Matatu. Matatu. So oh, wait. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we might be sued. We might be sued. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It, it, there are three that. things. So there are three things. <laughs> there are three things. Eh? There are three things. So for you to transition learners, you need information. Yeah. It's not like at your picky ponky at one, two, three, science, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which kind of felt like how it reported. So that's not, yeah. that's not how it's supposed to go. It's yeah. supposed to have a reason. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's You should have a reason. Your competencies, why your interests. Should, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, remember I said, there is no data that exists. Right now. To show uh, what are the strengths of learners. Because... Mm. Learners were given competency records for for their last year and the other year and the other year. And they went with them at home. Yeah. So now we are relying on the grace of God, to be <laughs> honest. Because how are you going to do that? Like right now we have some data for learners, which we want to, to compute and try and show what are the strengths of learners. 
that can be used as a basis because that's formative assessment. Mm. That has been assessed progressively. So today we learned this. Yeah. This is how they fared. They fared. Tomorrow we learned this. This is how they Fair fared. Enough. Yeah. And all this information collected over time, you can be able to draw patterns and show this learner, when it comes to English, they seem to be really doing Good well. Goodwill, yeah. And, and Kiswahili yeah. and sciences. And even if it gets us... 70% of the way, we can still it's now... Still something. You know, we can still now put in another data set to help us now decide what pathways do they go. That's so cool. Now, almost a million learners with no records will have to transition at grade uh, nine. Yeah. Wow. That so now you can messy. imagine yeah. how messy it's going to be. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the biggest challenges that are facing education, where we really have... What's the word? Knee jerk. Like mm. we're just reacting to to a crisis and another crisis, and we can't even see another crisis that's coming two, three steps down the road. There is yeah. another crisis that's coming in. Yeah. We will be transitioning, and we will be do what? And then there is other teachers that we need to teach us these other subjects Man, that we, yeah, so we are anticipating in the next two, three years. Yeah, uh, these are the new requirements for teachers to teach. Eh, hey, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. Okay. So that's another challenge. Mm. Having access to data for transitioning learners credibly, it's an issue. And you know now that divide is really sharp across public school and yeah, I can imagine. Schools, so. so private, I imagine private is a bit better. Or yeah, but not so much. Not so much. Not okay. so much. When you look at it, mm. uh, you know, uh, what school did you go to? I went to Consolata for my primary mm -hmm. and then Loretta Convent Valley Road for my high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what was the rationale for you to be taken to that primary school? Primary the school? primary school. Hey, yeah. staunch Catholics, man. Oh, your <laughs> parents are staunch Catholics. <laughs> yeah. So they kind okay. of... Yeah. So apart from being Catholics, what was the other rationale? I mean, I think it was... It is a good school. It's a good school. Um, it's lo like located in Nairobi, not too far from home. It, at that time, it was performing fairly well. Um, a, pr a private school that wasn't too expensive, like, you know, the yeah, yeah. IGCSEs of that time. And okay. yeah, it seemed, seemed like an okay school and the teachers were good. Mm -hmm. um, and still, I think that Catholic foundation was yeah, very yeah, yeah. important Catholic for my foundation. parents. Okay, I <laughs> yeah. I see. So I'm trying to get to the point where what, what was good performance at that time? You talked about it. Yeah, I, I think like good performance, again, just making sure you're getting good grades and... And I guess, like, put it into context. I want you to land it there. Like, I get being good at the sciences and the maths. And what was a good grade at that time? Hey, so are, you, are we talking about primary school? Yeah, primary. I was school. never like the top student. Yeah, but, but what was a good expected grade at the time? Like, whew, do you even remember? Like, like just to be top, like just getting A's, literally. Yeah. Okay. What I'm trying to get to is, yeah. in those days, I went to a private school. Yeah. Actually, I went to a public school and then I went to Pri another private, public and then private. Mm -hmm. Now, in those days, what we were looking for mm -hmm. is 400 and above. Yeah, exactly. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 400 exactly. and above. I got 400, 400 and above. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so that's what we were looking for. Yeah, yeah. Now, the reason why I'm bringing out this point is because that has been the selling point for public private schools for the longest time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the longest time here in Kenya. Mm. 400 and above. Yeah. Yeah, even our mean score is for 20, yeah. for 13, for yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's so true. 400 and above, and we're trying to make sure that bottom, hakuna watu wengi, like maybe the lowest learner of 340, 350 there. Okay. So that's been their selling point. All right. Now, KCPE, We've just done the last one. Yeah. The last one. And you know, you ask the difference between public and private schools. Yeah. Now, that difference is wiped out now. Oh, really? All of a sudden, yes. Yeah. Now, there's no KCP. Yeah. Now, I want you to tell me as a parent, when how you're going to I choose, a, how will you pick a school now? Yeah. Yeah. At least that one had a strong Catholic foundation. Yeah. <laughs> say, okay. Yeah. Now, I think I value strong, strong foundation for, for yeah. maybe Catholic foundation. You can pick that school. Yeah. Okay. We can't all pick a strong Catholic foundation. Yeah, you can't. Maybe yeah. they're not there or yeah. we're not, or we, don't, we yeah. don't subscribe. What are we going to choose? And the common denominator was 400 and above. 
You see the challenge? Yeah. Now so, in CBC, uh, when your child performs, they either... Uh, wait, so there are no like KCP uh, marks? Just... <laughs> so how do you know? So, so that's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. And can you Crazy. imagine there is no data? Yeah. You see, at least in those times, it would, it would matter that even if you didn't do KCP, there was a mock. Yeah, yeah. There was an indexing exam yeah, yeah. and another exam and another exam. Index so right seven. now in CBC, we are moving <laughs> out of All exams. Yeah. But there is no data for formative wow, assessments. Wow, no exams. Eh, can you imagine? There are exams, but we're moving out of, you know, that kind yeah, of, perform- that end of yeah. performance scoring. Yeah, we're yeah. moving out of it. Okay. So like right now, even for students who did Kepsea, Kepsea is a grade six exam. Mm. So it's a KCP for grade six. But even when you do it, you don't get marks. You just told. Well, this is a different world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. Yeah. By the way, there's lots of Kenyans who don't know this. But way. like, how do I... Especially in... parents. Yeah, and oh me, that's why I, I, my children don't go to... Because I don't understand. No one has sat down eh? and explained to me this properly. Like, yes. this is what CBC is. Which, when you explain, it sounds really nice. But I also have a few challenges with that. Because yes. I don't know... is. I tell is I don't know what my child is good at, like, and I need Correct. to know that. So Correct. that's very difficult. That's that's where we are right now. Oh, okay. Right now, you will only be told whether your child is meeting expectation, uh, exceeding expectation, below or. Approaching. What does that mean? What are the expectations? <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. And you see, that's a problem where uh, we all have to now start asking questions, especially as parents. Yeah. And then as schools. Of knowing, first of all, what are these expectations? Because like I said, our, our expectations were 400 and above. That was a very, it's very easy Is to it? know. You know, like my child, Alipata, 420. Yeah. 420, as an expectation means, they are likely to go to a national school, Lenana, Kenya High, you know, all those yeah. uh, public schools. Public, nice, good schools, alliance. And yeah, I thought you needed higher. The high five. Yeah, but still, <laughs> yeah, still yeah, when, yeah. when you're in those ranges, yeah. at least you will not learn yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Maybe for, for, for 20, for 30. Yeah. So that's number one. But now you're told your child is exceeding expectations. Now, sir, sir, you've got such information you're giving me. The same parents <laughs> want their children to go to alliance when they come to senior secondary school. Oh, tough. It's true. I mean, so how do nothing we... has changed yeah. in terms of the, the underlying expectation, but the expectations of, when it comes to reporting, they are not clear. But that must You're not make told. it hard, very hard for the schools as well to know this Thank student, you. this learner should be at alliance. But I guess it's also very good. I don't know. I see no, it's no, no. an opportunity. Even uh, for... l- let me tell you. It's not good, by the way. <laughs> not at all? You see, let me tell you. Mix it up a bit of below see, average, above average, meet expectations all in like one school. I think it provides a wholesome... <laughs> it, is, it doesn't. Let me tell okay. you why it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Because a whole practice has to change. Okay, yeah. L- let, me, let me tell you what doesn't change and then now we look at what has changed. Mm-hmm. What doesn't change is our parents still want to see... My child will go to University of Nairobi. Yeah. Okay, you or the good ones, eh? Strathmore. Marcel, Strathmore. Mm. And so, whatever criteria those universities will use to get students into those schools is whatever criteria that we want to work with as expectations. Yeah. To Correct. Yeah. So now, if that is a criteria, it is still not clear how our students will go into those schools when they're being told they're meeting expectations because it's not a score. It's not a score. A lot of, a thousand of us are meeting expectations. So how will you cut off Wangari or so-and-so and, yeah, and, and admit uh, another person. Getahi or yeah. whoever it is? How will you do that? Yeah. So now when you come to the school, and, and that's where now the practice has been. If you look at, in our times in, in the last like 10 years, Getting a 400 was more important than anything because it guaranteed you Amen. Yeah. getting there. Yeah. Now, for you to get a 400, what has been the practice is, I don't care how I teach, by the way, if I serve an exam every week, yeah. we are continuously cram, grading. Cram, cram, so you, cram. you continuously uh, learn how to answer questions. Yeah, you cram it. So every <laughs> week we have a mathematics paper, Umefika 80. Every week, every week, every week, Baka, by the end of the, the year, it's minutes. like you're seeing a, a, a question, you are just, you, already you have an answer, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So whether the teacher had a lesson plan or came into class and improved how they teach, it, it didn't matter. Didn't matter. So it means even for the longest time, we didn't care how teachers teach. Because we cared about the grades. Yeah, we cared about the grades. Mm-hmm. So if the teacher produces the grades, how they teach is 
is relevant. And how to produce the grades is simple. Come up with uh, 10, 10, 10 papers. You have a uh, mark those papers, come up with more, uh, do JESMA, do Targeter, do other KCP mock trials, get KCP for the last 10 years, serve it to your, to your learners and let them do it, see how they score. So you see, the only way we measure exam, the only way we measure mm. progress is exams. Yeah. But you see now, CBC wants to change that, but there is no data. Yeah. So we still have to sort of rely on exams to know, have we been have teaching? We, yeah. Have we been learning? And Crazy. you see now, that's where Kurasa, we're trying to fix the practice to say yeah, that kazi. once you teach, <laughs> I say, eh, hey, tukona kazi. And I wish we can help people to understand that, to understand yeah. that actually the practice, we have to now start knowing who are the good teachers. Yeah. And those good teachers are not only in the candidate classes. Some of them are in PP1. There's a teacher who taught you how to write. Yep. There's a teacher who taught you how to understand basic number yeah, plus values. Exactly. They are important. They are. But when you go back into those uh, systems, you can't. We used to we used to only reward the teacher who's been serving exams, 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 exams. Uka pata four hundred. Mm -hmm. So now you can say this teacher made me get four fifty. Yeah. But the contribution down the grades doesn't matter. Yeah, and you can't even trace it right how? now. How? Yeah, yeah, you don't. Really there is no data. There is no. There is no evidence. Unless the individual past student learner tells you, like I can tell you, <laughs> me the teachers who have shaped my lives and stuff. Down the but grades. Yeah, down the grades. Yeah. But yeah, that is that is a very cool problem you're solving. Yeah. Thank you. You're doing God's work. Aki. Yeah. That's actually what we say. <laughs> <Alonso>. <laughs> actually, it is. It yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. The attention spans are really short these yeah. days. Yeah. So getting people to do the right thing, if it's going to take them a long time, I want to find Yeah. Mm. Any other challenges? I mean, you Other than that, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one. And it's good yeah, we spent can... a lot of time yeah. working on it. The other challenge, I would say, is resources. Because now, you have to have now digital. You have to invest in devices. You have to invest in internet, good internet. Yeah. You have to invest in... Uh, there's a lot of CBC activities that require resources. And so that is justifiable that some people have not been able to get to, to certain levels of achieving CBC implementation because you need a lab, you know. You but need... let me ask you, when they were changing from 844 to CBC... Wasn't, wasn't it expected that you need all these additional resources before changing a whole system like that to make sure you're equipping schools and there's like teachers and learners with everything that they need to be successful? It's kind of strange that... Uh, uh, this is what I would say. I think coupled with that problem yeah. is also knowledge. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying that is because actually education is the most funded... Uh, ministry or category in, in our country. Today. Really? Maybe after defense. We don't know how much money yeah. goes into defense. Yeah. But education gets like like 20 something percent of 20. I, I don't know if it's 28, 29. And we're trying to get it up there. So education has a ton of investment in terms of our ability as a country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I say that the challenge could be information is the understanding of what is what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Because when you come back to, 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 to whatever experiments that have to be done, a lot of the times they require you go to textbook center, you go to a bookshop or whatever, and buy something. Mm. But, but really, what you're trying to do is just learn, yeah. put in the competencies. And so there is always alternatives for more expensive uh, activities, for instance. So they, you know, there are things where, but instead of buying a ready-made whatever, you can get Manila paper or you can get certain cheaper paper, folding paper for doing some projects. Yeah. And so that lack of information, okay, gotcha. and maybe, maybe sometimes laziness or <laughs> the love of convenience has meant that when you Something want to create expensive. something, you have to send students home to tell parents to buy something before the next day. And so Wait, but that's, that's an additional cost. Okay, got you. Yeah. So from what I'm hearing, CBC is like encouraging, which I like, a bit more of creation and creating mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm. that's nice. Good to hear. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what should happen. Like, like now there's, there's looming, which is part of curriculum. And you know there are looming kits that are sold in bookshops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you go and collect bottle tops, lots of bottle tops, these are plastic. You can actually do a lot of looming with those things. Oh, yeah, for sure. But 
but it's too much work you know how long will you take these uh-uh, kids are in Nairobi <laughs> and the kind of thing so, yeah, so, so like now it. what happens is you will be told to go and buy looming kits in in Nairobi or oh, uh, whatever and yeah, yeah. come with, with so the difference between uh spending more effort to get things done within locally available resources often means that that cost has to be uh, put gotcha. on top of your All right, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Um any other challenges you want to cover? But is that like your the main uh obviously there is lots of others but maybe maybe just working with government that's the last thing. Yeah, I did say. want to ask you that if like yeah. the government is one of Because your key what partners. we are doing yeah what we are doing is <laughs> we are doing work for the government literally literally because our literally, government literally we are doing work is... for the government and so <laughs> having them to recognize what we are doing to see it and to to have frameworks where we can collaborate that's a big issue but again it's normal because you know government is very complex it's it's like hey even someone in government is trying to get another someone in government wacha wacha mimi mwenye niko hapa nje having a startup there is someone who is in a in a ministry in government ministry of energy trying to get someone in ministry of zwi wildlife or fisheries and it's almost very hard to collaborate so that's that's another challenge particularly because we're in a government regulated sector, sector yeah. yeah i wish we were selling uh, water bottles you're just mm. selling it would have been it would have been easier but yeah. that's that's another thing so you'll find that it takes takes time but okay. so most of your schools i'm assuming they're more private than public more private yeah, more private, yeah, than, more okay. private than public okay yeah All but right. we still have a few public schools that we work with about 20 and in far flung areas like like lamu can you imagine oh cool lamu. and how do you get them is it just by referrals how do they hear about you on board yeah so for public schools it's yeah. a lot of it is referrals, referrals so we yeah. attend some of this uh, like now there's capsha mm. capsha is kenya heads of uh, prime public primary schools mm-hmm. and it's a big event like it, there's like 12000 head teachers who come into into a meeting wow so by having exhibitions at such places you know there are people who will come to your tent and you will talk to and they will invite you into their to their schools then now when that begins then they start recommending to other schools awesome. within their localities so right. then then it 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 spreads like that awesome cool yeah yeah um so right now how are you funding all of these activities <laughs> eh <laughs> yeah so actually Uh, we we've been self funded for oh, okay. for quite a while mm-hmm. up until last year last year we were able to raise some pre-seed amount mm-hmm. and that's actually really helped us okay how much uh, did you raise well, we don't talk about oh that. we don't talk about that yeah, yeah it's undisclosed because we still have some milestones that we have okay was receive. it a grant or no it's it's a uh, commercial oh, com- money okay. it's commercial mm-hmm. money so we still have milestones to be able to receive mm-hmm. and why we don't announce is because we haven't received the full amount gotcha so you've you know, this this issue where <laughs> where to me announce to me receive uh, whatever million yeah 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 but you didn't actually receive it so, yeah, so they're talking about it like, then yeah. later you start saying actually some money was never wired mm, so gotcha. currently we're still like Uh, performing some okay. getting to some milestones but maybe next year we'll be able to complete that mm, and then you'll um, announce maybe no. if we if you <laughs> want <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. but it, it's not useful by the way in yeah. our sector yeah uh, really, oh, really it's not it doesn't okay. help it, yeah. it doesn't actually it's for vloggers and it, it, it is irrelevant yeah, it is relevant because our clients don't even access they, this news like, no, they don't even mean? care they don't even read raising stories by the mm. way so we don't We don't even think it's important yeah. to announce. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So that's how we've been funded and yeah, we are lucky. It's are you looking for investors right now? Patient. At the moment no. Okay. Uh, like I said we already have uh, So if know, I was to give you money you said no. A grant we can take a grant. <laughs> a grant. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can take a grant but we still haven't thought about what are our next milestones okay. post this uh, deal. So and and what should it help us to do okay. so those are things we haven't quite put in place and and once we do that it will be possible we'll now start fundraising awesome yeah that's yeah. really cool yeah. um what's your take on ai in like the education space um yeah i mean you're you're putting together you're starting to put together a lot of um yeah, data yeah, yeah. 
Um, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on like AI. Yeah. 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 Actually, um, remember we are looking at an industry that is like in the 1970s or 80s in terms <laughs> of how it works. So we will have to do a crash program to get them to technology and then to AI. Mm. However. AI is really powerful. Yeah, like, I can imagine. Yeah. We actually use it. All our devs use uh, Copilot and AI mm. for development. Mm. And that has actually taken our development journey much faster. Mm -hmm. So where we see a possibility is in terms of lesson planning, as we move, it will be possible for us to help teachers develop better lesson plans. Okay. Okay. So based on the data that we have, we can now begin to say that if you're teaching for this learning area, for example, and this is the localized context you're teaching in, based on the data that we have, we can improve your lesson plan in this kind of a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can be able to compare outcomes from certain certain areas based on based on how they were planned or how they were taught. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. So we are experimenting with that. And it's it's just technology we should be able to embed on our platform invisibly, so we will not have to to talk about like oh, we are selling AI. AI. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a convenience that our customers should feel. This is much better. I like it. You know, yeah, they should feel make it, yeah, some value. magical. Yeah, you yeah. know, smoke should come out of their ears. <laughs> <laughs> so they should feel it, but not really because we have because our customers again, like I say, they don't care if we say we have AI. Yeah. It could have some nice impact when we are talking about it on LinkedIn or to investors or to bloggers or to wherever. But it's not. but right now we're just trying to see how it can even if it's just grammar checking yeah. or helping them to order and a lesson nicely. So those are the areas and and we already have some trials on GPT-4 mm. which we have in, integrated on our platform. Awesome. Yeah. That's really good to hear. Thank you. Um, I guess my, I have a f just a few final questions just around the career of teaching. And I don't remember the last time I had someone say, I want to be a teacher and what you're thinking around that. Um, cause I'm a big believer. We do need teachers. Like education is like, and I wouldn't say education, more knowledge is a weapon and yeah, uh, something yeah. for us as Africans to use just to improve our livelihoods. What are your thoughts around, yeah, that space and are you playing a part in just like bringing back the love? Yeah. 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 yeah so the answer is yes. We actually are, let me say, super focused mm -hmm. on the teacher, okay. including making making them feel that they're in a career. Yeah. Uh, because when you look at a lot of teachers, they ended up teaching. They didn't want to. They Maybe did. it was an option B, option C, option yeah. even up to Z. Sometimes you could tell. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. But now, how it's 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 propagated mm. again be makes it even worse. Because, like I said, up until KCP is now over, we've always just celebrated head teachers, yeah, senior teachers, deputies, and teachers of candidate classes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. True. So right now we have this award that we are running on our on our platform, which we had actually, the event was on, our annual summit was on 1st of September. And we are celebrating teachers who are just doing the right thing. Okay. Now, this is indiscriminate. We don't care if they're a pre-primary te yeah. teacher or they're a grade 8. We don't care. As we just look at whether you're doing the right thing. Mm. And what we want to do is we want to encourage teachers who... Who, who put their heart into it, who are yeah, doing the right those thing are the best, yeah. and, and celebrate that. Now, over and above that, we have a bit of partners who we add onto our platform to help them improve their, their, their teaching, so like continuous professional development. So by continuing to showcase things like that and okay. bringing out information on even low, low teachers who are doing the right thing, I think it's helping. Yeah, you know, it's helping, and also including them in conferences, including them. You know, teachers are really out of a lot of these things that we do. You not know, even education conferences leave out teachers. Oh, Can you no. imagine? So yes. So who do they bring? I mean, uh, maybe lecturers at the worst, like oh. to Manzia lecturers, to Kendaju, PhD researchers, education stakeholders, and then journalists, and then startup founders like me and yeah. similar cadres. So, 
ensuring that we are bringing them more or rather we yeah. are, we are we are magnifying their voices how do we magnify how do we give more more platform to teachers normal teachers to showcase to 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 show that they are doing something because that's the problem the problem is uh, i mean we look at them as as nannies should i say that yeah it's very sad and they're that, not that that they are just there to take care of our children and and mm. all they deserve is thank you like okay we appreciate but you know these are people they're who they're shaping you our exactly, children's exactly and it's, yeah. it's very important so for us as much as possible it's our focus to have platforms where we showcase we highlight what they're doing and because these are the people we work for for us as kuras and we are very dedicated to that we will at some point include learners on our platform but we think for mm. us the driver is the teacher we continue yeah. to just to work for the teacher that's beautiful cuz i do think the learners already have sometimes the parents who are <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm, i'm so happy to hear that you're focusing on the teachers that's Correct. beautiful yeah um yeah. is there anything else you wanted to touch on cuz i think i have exhausted most of my questions um it's been very enlightening i've learned a lot from this conversation yeah thank you anything thank else you. you wanted to touch on on your startup on this topic uh well for me it's is just looking at the whole general uh, landscape for startups where we still don't have enough uh, focus on education yeah and i think even out there it would be nice if if we can and and thank you actually for your for your platform for highlighting edtech you know and, yeah. and even when 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 you are looking at startups uh, let's also try and look at what can you know what's the what, what's the fair share of edtech and i know the returns are not always in money because fintechs a lot yeah. of it uh, you know if if i was fintech i'd be saying we've processed transactions <laughs> worth billion. $3 billion dollars <laughs> so it sounds like hey, hey. you need to listen yeah. but even in edtech uh, we have we have good we have decent returns to be honest uh, when you look at the sas value that we are generating uh, per oh. per unit cost but beyond that is impact which is not always interesting to to the common common um, people you know people who read blogs you would get more views if you said money uh, these guys were on a 15 billion or yeah. whatever so we we would just want to have a lot more visibility and and i know collaboration will also help us uh, if if there are any you know ideas for collaboration again to bring more platform to the people we are working for and okay. are working with again that would really be nice for for both you and for your viewers would really you know continue to make a benefit and just to make uh, make uh, our future more 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 guaranteed because this is actually our future uh, yeah. whoever is out there and amesha maliza shule they are really they already in the future that they envisioned or they didn't envision yeah. but the potential down there is much much greater and who knows we have very great people down down in the schools in the education who are coming up and so would really appreciate opportunities whether it's partnering with uh, science guys or arts journalists you know even if it means you want me to bring in a teacher here yeah, to yeah, this yeah. Uh, platform or someone who's been touched or who can you know try and broaden the the reach of our impact yeah. would really appreciate Adais, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> It's been really fun. <laughs> you may enjoy Sana. <laughs> I've learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, yeah, there you have it. Um wow, I have learned so much, um especially around like edtech and I do actually think Williams doing and the team at Kurasa are doing an amazing job. Um as I said, I think one of the few doing God's work. So, make Hallelujah. sure you support. <laughs> Go have a look. Um would love to hear your thoughts and He might have changed my mind about CBC. So, there we go. So, until next time, thank you so much and don't forget to comment, um share and subscribe. Bye here. 925 has good vibes. But 925 with Gary has better.